Good morning, Your Excellency, Erwin Homer, Norway Ambassador to Singapore, Mr. Tan Wai Yao, Singapore Non-Resident Ambassador to Norway, distinguished guests, partners and friends. I'm Chris Song, the CEO of Capital Offshore and Marine. I'm honoured to join you today to share with you an important theme of today's conference. Collaboration between various stakeholders between the two countries to create solutions for a more resilient and sustainable energy future. At the start of my speech, the message is that time is running out. Over the past two weeks, world government have been hard at work at COP27 in Egypt, addressing the existential threat of climate change. I think the message is clear. The 1.5 degree goal is on life support, and we are getting dangerously close to the point of no return, quote UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Now, it's important to accelerate the energy transition and it's key to limit global warming. But this requires concerted multi-party efforts to address the energy tri trilemma of environmental sustainability, energy security, as well as affordability and access. The diagram here from Equinor illustrates the changing focus of global energy focus policy over the past decade. And the last 18 months have exhibited a particularly erratic trajectory in uh, energy policy. Because first we had COVID-19, then we have the post-pandemic rebound, and of course the most recently, the war in Ukraine has actually focused global attention on the pressing need for energy security, and in some ways diluting the focus for decarbonisation. So it's important for us to balance this energy trilemma, and it will require both political resolve and a multitude of policy tools and international agreement, like the way that Singapore and Norway has been behaving as partners. But each sector has to play their part to decarbonize. But the maritime industry has a unique opportunity because we are just not looking at the tangible benefit of decarbonizing the maritime industry. With the industry moving 80% of the world trade overseas, the sector has the ability to transport green energy medium to different parts of the world, which would otherwise be impossible. Nearly 3% of the world final energy demand is consumed by ships, mainly by international cargo shipping. DNV estimate 5% of shipping in gross tonnage terms need to be operating emission-free by 2030 for the industry to meet its target. Digitalization of logistics and supply chain may increase fleet efficiency, but in the post-COVID world, an increasing GDP, cargo transportation needs are expected to outweigh efficiency improvement. So it's a critical time now for the industry for neither moving technology and marine fuels of the future. And no one nation can actually do all this. We need to determine technology in the industry that we can invest in and for policies and regulation to standardise and adopt this. And one of the key solutions that was mentioned was green shipping corridors and clean energy marine hubs. This is very important for the trading hub. It's a critical organising framework connecting low or zero carbon shipping to broader region, not only at the locality, but it will span out to different nations and international decarbonisation initiatives. Besides that, they also provide a self-contained alternative fuel infrastructure and vessel support, and thereby overcoming uncertainty. And this is critical for financing to be activated. Clean energy marine hubs also act as a cross-marine sector. But beyond that, a public-private platform for people to collaborate, share knowledge, de-risk investment, and create necessary infrastructure 
in the most strategic locations. It is widely agreed that the main long-term drivers for change are digitization, plunging renewable costs, electrification and rising carbon prices. In order for us to reach 2050 with a good equal mix of fossil and non-fossil sources as primary energy, technology and digitization are enablers. They serve as a key role for driving down costs. Digitization also continues to facilitate carbon accounting and energy efficiency tracking. Only with visibility of such can we drive down emission in parallel to clean energy adoption. Keppel Offshore and Marine is leveraging technology and digitization to enhance the safety, productivity, sustainability of our operation. But as a business and a solution provider, we hope to partner our clients and our suppliers to engineer the transition in a faster way. And again, there are already test cases, as mentioned, between Singapore and Norway companies. This slide shows the value chain for offshore clean energy and how Cap Offshore and Marine is supporting this ecosystem. It actually leverages on both Norway companies and Singapore companies on our in-depth engineering and asset construction, integration and commissioning experience. Enabling COM to contribute to a holistic range of maritime solutions covering offshore wind, gas and alternative fuels as well as for floating infrastructure. But we can't do this alone. Government and industry needs to act together. The urgency of climate action requires both government as well as commercial entities and enterprises to work together for the common good. Some of the examples that we can collaborate, we can catalyze the development of necessary supply chain for low-carbon solutions such as hydrogen, CCUS, support and leverage emerging technologies and innovation, and adopt novel business models to support energy efficiency. One of the most important things that we need to enable this energy transition is the proactive step to mobilize greener financing. To ensure capital flows to where it has the most impact, and closing the divergence in transition pace of the different sectors. Concerted efforts need to direct to developing markets and investors so that different financiers have business model and risk appetite to come in at each stage of a project, from concept to completion. And government energy strategies can help to create fertile ground for new technologies that will give certainty for the required capital to flow beyond pilot projects and small-scale use. With all the challenges and the potential collaboration in mind, we need to forge ahead on this energy transition and it entails very strong partnerships between the two countries. Norway and Singapore has a long history of strong partnership. Since the establishment of Norwegian Embassy in Singapore in the 1960s. Some of the key Norwegian companies that have grown over the years in Singapore, including setting up of head offices and Asian hubs in Singapore, just to name a few, partners like DMV, Kongsberg Williamson, BW Group, just to name a few. Many of these are close partners of Kapoor Shore and Marine. We see that there are many areas of collaboration between the countries and companies from both nations. Norwegian energy partners have more than 80 partners doing businesses in Singapore and this region with yards and contractors. Beyond businesses, in September 2022, DNV signed an MOU with Singapore Institute of Technology, SIT, to promote the maritime decarbonisation and digitalization. 
This is a very good example of engagement between Institute of Higher Learning and industry stakeholders to create leaders for the future in the transition goals. I'm confident that we will see new areas for collaboration in renewable energy, decarbonisation and offshore wind. Singapore has also built up momentum on low-carbon hydrogen future. We have a national hydrogen strategy that was unveiled by DPM Wong during the Singapore International Energy Week in 2022. Hydrogen can meet up to 50% of Singapore's energy needs by 2050. From there, we can foresee that there were many opportunities for Norwegian specialists and also solution providers to work with companies and agencies like MPA, IMDA, to advance decarbonisation and digitalization of maritime sector. In conclusion, today's conference brings together a lot of smart thinkers, leaders and partners in business, government and industry. We have to collaborate in this journey because no one company or no one country can reach the goal on its own. And we will have to have explore collaboration opportunities between Singapore and Norway in a more aggressive way. It's about innovation delivered versus the innovation pipeline. With that, I look forward to many insightful discussions and meetings in this challenging but opportunistic environment. Thank you.